think we're alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Unless you clicked on this video, <laughs> for which I thank you very, very much. So welcome and thank you for being here, joining me. We have work to do, but as per usual, let's enjoy a little bit the fruits of our labors. This is my blooming alley. It doesn't look like there's much going on, but there's quite a bit going on. It's just the blooms themselves are a little bit delicate and they kind of blend in with the surrounding trellis and the white curtain. So moving straight to the left middle shelf, which is the one that I see. This is my vista from the living room. The first one is my Lelia Regina back in bloom with two gorgeous daisy looking little blooms. Beautiful. Very happy that this one's back in bloom, even though only one lead bloomed this year. One, that's fine. She's healthy. Hip. Icky, pride of place. The orchid that is like a Duracell bunny. It just grows and blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms. <laughs> Next to Hibiki, I moved my Phalaenopsis Chatela Day. Yeah, I have to reconsider her location, but that is what we're here for today. But for now, this is where I have her positioned. The reason I'm saying I want to move her is because I don't want her leaves to lean over to where the light source is, which is to the left of her, meaning she will be wasting energy doing that. It's temporary, but for now, just prepping for the orchid chores. That's where she's going to be. Beautiful in bloom. I'm losing a few blooms. That's fine, but applause, applause. Her third spike, the newest one of the season. That bud is swelling and we're going to get ourselves some blooms. Dendrobium sutiknoi. My goodness, even though the blooms are fading a little bit into the pink, I have as yet to see the second bloom drop. Holding up beautifully and already busy with a new growth. That's the way uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. At the far end is Dendrobium antenatum. Beautiful honeysuckle fragrance permeating the blooming alley with that dappled light shining on her. It's just magical, so whimsical that corner because behind her is that beautiful spike of my Venerica prismartocarpa, which is not fragrant. Meanwhile, if these two bloom together from here on in, I wouldn't want any fragrances to clash, <coughs> right? <laughs> behind that, even more difficult to see, but I have a new Tolumnia in bloom. I don't have her name, so I call her yellow, orange with brownish flare spotting. <laughs> she just opened up her blooms, but you see how everything is sort of like washed out. There's more going on than we actually can really, really see. Right above my yellow flare, orange, bloody blah, blooming Tolumnia is the one with the white necklace, the fuchsia one with the white necklace. She has got that massive spike growing again. And look at all those buds. We're gonna have ourselves a nice pop of color to complement Dendrobium hibiki. Next to that is Golden Fire. The first flush of blooms on that spike is starting to peter out, but the branch is in bloom. Happy days. Then when we move a little bit over to the right of the blooming alley, I've got Eonopsis popcorn haruri in bloom, looking marvelous. I still haven't made my mind up if I want that second spike to bloom out. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's probably going to happen. I just haven't pulled the snips out to do it yet. And just for show purposes, because this orchid actually is still living on the top shelf, this is Bretonia Shelob Tolkien, an orchid that I received from Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents. Thank you very much, Fernanda. Here is Bretonia Shelob Tolkien in bloom for the first time in my blooming alley. But just to take the picture, I brought her down. She lives on the top shelf because I'm trying to make sure that the buds open up evenly for a pretty display. And drum roll! Look who's back. Pro Catavola Golden Peacock just opening up her first spike. Remember, maybe not, I don't know, but back in another Orchid Chores video, I showed you some spikes and I said, I've got one spike from Golden Peacock back. At <clears throat> yeah, when I pulled the orchid down, there's two more in the works. Very beautiful. Happy to see this orchid back in bloom. <laughs> Guess what? Yes, next year <laughs> she's going to be traumatized once again. So vigorous. Maybe I should just get a bigger pot. I don't know. Decisions, decisions for 2023. But behind me 
I've got Rainbow Forest. Oh my word, this orchid is just gorgeous. It is just divine. These summer fragrances, ooh, I'm holding on to them tight. And then at night, just recently opened is my Brassavola flagellaris. Single bloom, ha, huh. I had about three growths this season and yet I only have one lead blooming so far. Huh, maybe 2023 will give us some more of her blooms. But at night, ooh, lemon rind and powder sugar vanilla permeates my living room. It's delicious. Do not let the simplicity of the bloom fool you. The complexity of her fragrance at night, wow. As I'm still in my flip-flops, it knocks my flip-flops off. <laughs> now, all these orchids are a distraction because what we have to do is take advantage of how the angle of the sun is dropping in the sky. No snickering from all of you in the southern hemisphere, okay? I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and we're going to be extending what is the bright shade of the deep south because the shelf to the right of me, and that is why Lady Chatterley is on the main shelf in the Blooming Alley, the shelf to the right of me can now go into the deep south because while the Rapiculus Lelias were summering over here in the bright shade of the Blooming Alley, they need to now get hardened off to accept direct sun, even though it is winter sun, it is still direct sun. The atmosphere is much, much clearer, so they are more vulnerable to being burnt. I need to get them acclimated. Besides, it's going to free up some space in my blooming alley where I can maneuver around again and then, you know, protect other orchids as things start to get a little bit more dicey. Let's just call it like that. Dicey, the definition being if it becomes stormy, rainy, and cold. Did I just say if? Never mind. It's going to happen. Anyway create more space in the blooming alley. So what I've already been doing in recent days is put the paths out early morning so that they don't get scorched by any kind of sun that comes in early morning and hits them directly. Now you may say, early morning sun, what's the big deal? Yeah, when there is not a breeze, it's like one of those magnifying glass effects that can burn the leaves. <laughs> Paths, <clears throat> not so much. So that's what I've been doing. And instead of moving them back and forth, back and forth, and then forgetting, because hello, forgetful can be my second name. That shelf needs to go into the deep south. We need to scoot the summer bloomers forward because there's plenty of shade. They will never be exposed to direct sun. <gasps> Deep breath. <laughs> so with all that jibber jabber out of the way, if you would like to join me, help me stay focused to get this done, let's get the fall orchid shuffle underway. Here goes. It feels like yesterday that I've only just set this up and here we are. Oh. Time flies, time flies.
that's it for now. Uh, <laughs> at least now I can reach and do a little bit of scrubbing behind those bars. All right, let me explain what's going on now on the extension of the deep south. Because yes, you could see there was quite a bit of shuffling. <laughs> Okay, so in retrospect, I was a little bit concerned that if it were to rain overnight, my slipper orchids would be exposed probably to water drops if they were on that rack. So I've put them under cover right here, not so scrunched up, lots of airflow, lots of light from the reflecting facade. Another thing I started out doing, thinking if I'm going to have my slipper orchids down here, was to put all the big pots, even though they're semi-hydro, above them, to protect them from any possible precipitation that may happen when I'm not around or I'm distracted. In retrospect, it was bending the shelf just a little bit too much for my liking. So shuffle numéro no. deux ensued, and the bigger pots are now on the much, much sturdier table, and all the little ones have moved over to the side. For now, of course, there are some new growths on my Repiculus Lelias that I'm wary of. Some of them are not as strong as I would like them to be, and I don't need those growths to rot out. I already lost a growth of my Papstii right there when I was not paying attention and I guess water got into it and it had almost fully developed and still it rotted out. So I still have one viable new growth left on the Pops DI, but both of them have grown roots even though the leaf is gone. So yeah, you can see that there's a little bit of, you know, apprehension in my voice once again. You'd think I've done this so many times, I should be a bit more, you know, comfortable with what's going on. <laughs> no, I don't think I would ever get super duper comfortable. However, this is going to give everybody the maximum amount of light. And down there are my summer bloomers, still benefiting from the light and warmth. And the shadow itself is not going to be that much further encroaching upon their space. Meanwhile, you can also see it's not that defined. Today is a somewhat of an overcast day. The sign of the times. Oh, and I benefited from a little bit of a gap over there. So now the chair is in a proper place as opposed to just standing like willy-nilly, sort of in the middle of space. <laughs> That is, to anybody who is not understanding why a chair would be positioned the way it was positioned. <laughs> For us orchid lovers, the weird things, they make perfect sense. At least, that's how I see it. So the Blooming Alley needs a reshuffle now as well, but I'll be working on that off camera. And if you're interested, I'll do another video explaining the logic why I have positioned orchids the way I have. That can be another Orchid Chores Diary video. For now, I have to go around and mist everybody because even though it is a little bit cooler, the Vandas do not need to dehydrate. I need to keep those leaves nicely hydrated, at least give them some kind of respite. I love the look of the Deep South now, but I do not like why. All right, so <laughs> I much prefer putting them into the blooming alley because then, you know, protecting because of summer. And here we are, fall. Anyway, as I said at the beginning of the video, you in the Southern Hemisphere, stop snickering. <laughs> the solution to my envy would be to move back around the equator at sea level. <laughs> don't give me altitude, don't give me cold, do not give me angle of the sun to think about, etc. Either way, wherever you are in the world, if you enjoyed this video, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you think it was worthwhile, a thumbs up, that would be awesome. If you're like me, a little bit grumpy that this has to happen now because heading into fall, go ahead and give it a thumbs down because that is how I feel. But it was fun doing it together with you in mind. So thank you so very much for watching. If you've made it this far, your time is appreciated. Have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.